这玩意儿怎么办？《Summer Day》is an Edward Yang film that came out in 1991. So, *A Brighter Summer Day* is a $50 picture request from Perry.、Um, he specifically wanted to request this film in the month of July to celebrate this film's 30th anniversary. He told me it would be awesome if I came out with it on the exact day of this film's 30th anniversary. So, here it is, July 27th, and I've obviously. Never seen this film until now.、Um, I honestly have never been exposed to Edward Yang as a filmmaker until a few months ago when Yi was requested to me from, I believe, also Perry. And for those who follow my channel and have watched my Yi Yi review, you guys know that you know Yi Yi was kind of my hot take because even though a lot of people hail that film as a masterpiece, I I liked the film quite a bit, but. I just wasn't huge on it, as everyone else was.、Um, me giving Yi Yi a seven out of ten has now been a recurring meme ever since I did that review. But needless to say, I still liked Yi Yi quite a bit, and I saw so much potential from Edward Yang as a filmmaker that I really wanted to watch more of his stuff. And Yi Yi was the last film he made before he unfortunately passed away at the age of fifty nine, which is incredibly tragic. He died way too young, especially for somebody who obviously has this amount of talent. A Brighter Summer Day was a film that I felt like I really needed to see, and I'm really glad Perry requested this film to me because I blind bought this film during one of the Criterion hauls because I really had a lot of confidence that I was at the very least going to like it, and I. I more than just like it. I I can confidently say that I love this film. It's a four-hour film, so just prepare yourself for that. This is kind of one of those films where you have to just set aside an entire day to fully experience. It's a film experience that I don't think you're going to regret having because this, to me, was one of the most layered, complex, and powerful coming-of-age stories that I've ever experienced. And what's so amazing about that fact is that he's able to achieve this in the most subtle way that I've ever seen.、Um, because I'm gonna be honest, the first half of this film, it was kind of reminding me a lot of Yi Yi in terms of just how how brave and unafraid it was to truly take its time with its character and story building. And I was kind of worried that I was going to have the same issues that I had with Yi Yi with this film.、But、all I know is that when I went into the second half,、um, I that's when I truly started to believe and understand that I was going to experience something、um, that is truly beautiful and a stunning work of art.、Uh, first and foremost, we have to talk about the directing and the cinematography in this film.、Um, This film has some of the most beautiful and just gorgeous shots and shot composition that I've ever seen in a film. I mean, it looks so incredibly timeless.、Um, again, this film came out in 1991, and besides maybe a few scenes that give you that kind of early 90s grainy effect, there's just no way that anybody could tell you what year and what era this film came out in because. It truly is ageless the way it looks,、um, and that's because Edward Yang knows what he's doing behind the camera. And what I found really interesting about the cinematography in this film is that it utilizes this kind of off-center alignment technique、uh, when it comes to framing.、Um, it doesn't just use basic symmetry to really make the image pop out at you. Not that there's anything wrong with symmetry,、um, at least you know basic symmetry. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. Wes Anderson. Still makes gorgeous films by using symmetry, but like for example, like this shot here that I have in the background, he's able to make a shot look beautiful and appealing to the eye, without you know having things aligned in the middle and having both sides of the frame 
uh, mimic each other. And there's something really special about that. Not that this film doesn't have any symmetry at all. There's plenty of other gorgeous shots in this film that are symmetrical that I also just really loved. But I found it quite compelling to see this film utilize this off-center technique to framing that I honestly feel like I learned a lot from uh, watching this film, like in terms of shot composition and framing. And I'm truly grateful for that. But what I also loved about this film is that it feels so incredibly real and genuine. Um, there's no score throughout its entire film. You only hear like certain natural songs that are like in the film's presentation, like within the story. But besides that, this film doesn't have its own musical score that's in it. And I actually feel like that enhanced my experience with this film, which is usually kind of unusual because a lot of my favorite films have excellent scores. This one doesn't have one, and yet I feel like it added so much to the film. And I feel like if it did have one, um, it probably would have took away from this film's realism and authenticity. And I think that's also something that makes this film so easy to watch, is that it all feels incredibly real, and it, and pretty much none of it feels like you're just watching actors act, which is also incredibly impressive because the vast majority of these actors are amateur actors that have never acted in anything before. Um, the actress that plays Ming, I don't think she's ever acted in anything. Um, and apparently... She was raised in America, and what I read from IMDb trivia, hopefully it's not bullshit, um, is that she was speaking Mandarin in the film, and her accent was so heavy that Yang had to pretty much go back and redub all of her audio with a different actress, and that must have been painstaking for a four-hour film. But even though this film feels incredibly natural and genuine, and has this incredibly subtle presentation. I actually think, like, at least in comparison to Yi Yi, there's a lot more creativity and personality behind the camera. And, because that was one of my issues that I had with Yi Yi, is that I felt like I just needed a bit more of that personality behind the camera uh, to help keep me engaged. But this one basically gave me what I wanted in that regard. Um, I feel like... Yang's presence is a lot more apparent and it's still incredibly subtle. There's absolutely nothing flashy about it at all. It's still incredibly subdued, incredibly subtle, but there's just these little these little artistic choices and little stylistic choices he does um, you know, in terms of camera movement and in terms of framing that just made the film that much more unique and that much more compelling. But as I mentioned earlier, this is an incredibly powerful coming of age story. Um, and what helps make it so powerful is that again, this is a film that truly takes its time to really allow the audience to observe the lifestyle of these adolescents that are involved in gangs and um, are involved in, you know, many different family dramas and romantic dramas and all of these aspects of the film are incredibly compelling because of the fact that it truly takes its time and you really get every moment with these characters and these little subtle story details and you gain a better understanding of the love that they have for certain people and the kind of frustrations that they have, um, not only with, you know, problems that they have back home, but it's also apparent that there is a societal issue going on. Um, because I feel like one of the main themes of this film and what it's trying to express about the struggles that these adolescents are having is this kind of, this kind of issue with identity. Um, especially with our main character here, which by the way is based on a true story. I can't believe it took me that long to say this, but this film is based on a true story, which again, kind of makes it that much more interesting. But our main character is obviously struggling with being able to find himself and uh being able to be confident with something that he could identify with but that's mainly occurring because of the kind of current culture and society that he's being brought up in um whether it's an education system that um is basically seems like life or death for some of these kids like if you just if you fail and don't get past a certain grade, if you don't pass a certain test, you know, it makes them feel like their entire world is shattered. And I mean, that's the same with, with anywhere. And I love 
how that was demonstrated in this film. Because as a teenager, a lot of, even like the slightest bit of drama, can be earth shattering to them. But even beyond that, the society presented here also seems to lack a proper identity as well. And I think that's reflected on not only the, the citizens that live in there, but all of the children that are trying to grow up and find out who they are. But this lack of hope and this lack of security and confidence in who he is in terms of the main character leads to something that is absolutely tragic. Like, it was... It's, it's one of the most soul-crushing things I've honestly ever seen in film. Saying that it's going to rip your heart out is kind of an understatement because you really don't see it coming. And when it happens... um. It just makes you so incredibly angry. One thing I also loved about this film is that due to its ability to show you all the little details of the story that perhaps at the time you're wondering, you know, why exactly are you showing me this? Um, to me, it really demonstrates the reality of how complex our world is. Um, because a lot of the times, even though we feel like we have a nuanced understanding of a certain situation or of someone's story or life, there's there's still so much beneath the surface that can totally change your perspective on what you thought you knew. One thing I will say about the film, and this will probably change whenever I watch this film again, but there's so many different characters here that, had, that go by different nicknames and some go by their real names. And whenever they get referenced... Um, in this film, sometimes you, you really don't know who that certain character is talking about. And it takes you a very long time, um, until you get some clarity on that. You know, but maybe I'm alone. Maybe there, maybe everybody else, you know, found it really easy to follow all these characters and, uh, follow their nicknames and their real names. But, uh, for me, there were, there was a long stretches of time where I, I didn't understand who exactly they were referring to. Um, but especially by the second half of this film, you kind of get a better grasp of all these characters' names, and it becomes a lot easier to follow. But it was a little bit frustrating to watch this film for long periods of time, not really knowing which characters they were referring to. But overall, I obviously really love this film. Um, I think this is a beautiful, gorgeous, and heartbreaking piece of filmmaking. Um, that again is incredibly timeless and just shows you how much talent Edward Yang truly had. And I really can't wait to dive more into Edward Yang's work. Even though most people consider this to be his absolute masterpiece and his magnum opus, I'm still incredibly excited to watch more from Edward Yang. So I'm going to give A Brighter Summer Day a solid 9 out of 10. So what do you guys think the next Edward Yang film should be for me to watch? Uh, please let that be known in the comment section. And also, let me know your thoughts on A Brighter Summer Day. Yeah, that's all I got to say about A Brighter Summer Day. Thanks for watching this video and celebrating this film's 30th anniversary with me. Um, if you really enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it amongst your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more film-related content. <laughs>